Hi everyone, back here again for another video. For those of you who have been in my channel, you will know that I've been using my iPad for several years already, and I use it for everything. All my YouTube work, I do it here. And with my iPad, I use accessories, specifically my Logitech keyboards and mice, and I love pairing this with my iPad. A recent addition to my collection is the iPad Magic Keyboard, and I also very much enjoy using it with my iPad. Today in this video, I have another accessory to use, which is an external monitor. I have made videos on how I made my iPad as my laptop replacement, but today, let's see, can I make my iPad as a desktop replacement? Will it work? Let's have a look. First, let me explain my simple setup. I am using an old monitor from Dell, which again, my very generous friend has loaned me since the work from home season started last year. I say it's old because in Dell's website, they have discontinued selling this monitor, though I still find some on sale in Amazon. What I like about this monitor is the modern look as it has very thin bezels. Plus, it is big enough for me to do my work. And yes, I use this mainly when I work, so it's most of the time connected to my Windows laptop. This is a 24-inch display with full HD resolution. Well, 23.8 inches to be exact, according to Dell's website. This also comes with built-in speaker, which is a nice touch when I want to play some background music while working and I don't necessarily need to wear a headset or the AirPods. This comes with two HDMI ports, but there's no USB-C port here. So how I connect my iPad is by using this Dell USB adapter. Where I connect the USB-C to my iPad and then the HDMI to the monitor. I also use the additional USB Type-A port, which I have shown in some of my other videos, where I can also plug in the USB receiver of a mouse in this USB-A port. This adapter though does not charge my iPad, so my workaround is to use the Magic Keyboard's charging port to charge the iPad while I have it attached to the monitor. When using the iPad with the monitor, you will have this black bezels or border as it literally just mimics the iPad's screen size. These black borders may disappear when using some st stock apps of Apple. For example, the Photos app. It will show the photos and videos in full screen. Well, for videos, it shows it plays by AirPlay. So it's just showing full display in the monitor, but it's blank on the iPad screen. Other apps like iMovie will not display in full screen, but when clicking on this preview icon, it will display it on full screen while the editing panel remains on the iPad screen. It is the same for the Keynote app when using it for presentation. The presenter's view is on full screen, while the iPad screen shows the slides and the notes. As for third-party apps, I believe there are some third-party apps that can display in full screen like Procreate, for example, but I don't use it and so I don't have it on my iPad. To be honest, I don't really mind the bezels because even with it, I still get a bigger display that I can work with. If I can work on my iPad's 11-inch screen, then this bigger display is better, especially for someone who has poor eyesight like me. But to take it to another level, and to also save the battery life of my iPad, I prefer to close the cover of the case so the screen is off because, as I said, basically the iPad is just mirrored to the monitor. So unless I need to write with my Apple Pencil, or I really need multiple screens, then for me, it is better to close the case cover 
and turn off the iPad screen. Then I can use one of my Bluetooth keyboards and mouse, and today I'm pairing it with the wireless Magic Keyboard and the Logitech M340 mouse. With this setup, I can do my usual work on my iPad, and all the keyboard shortcuts and mouse gestures work as normal. Also, all the multitasking features work. Example, using the mouse, I can drag apps to split screen mode if I need to write and read something at the same time. I can show the dock by dragging the mouse and then I can drag another app, let's say open Safari. And at the same time, I can open YouTube in Safari using the website and play a video using picture-in-picture -picture mode. And I can also open more apps by using the slide over screens. With the mouse, I can do the gestures like going to the notification center, or I can also go to the control center. However, from here, it won't adjust the screen brightness since it's not controlling the monitor. And same with the volume control. The brightness and the volume must be adjusted via the monitor's control. Now, to take it a big step further, I am trying out the app called shift screen. I'm paying for this app as it looks very promising. Not sure if Apple has any plans to support external monitors in the future, but until then, this is a good solution. Once the app is downloaded to my iPad, when I open it, it shows these cards for a few explanation. For me, it's not that easy to understand. This is for me. Though, when I started using the app, then I get what those cards were telling me. I guess I'm the type that prefers to use it and at the same time learn how to use it. Today I will share with you my first impressions, then maybe in the next weeks or so, I will make an in-depth video on shift screen. Let me have more time using it so I can give my real review, so stay tuned. So first, shift screen can work on web apps only. And it takes getting used to, but after a few minutes, I think I got the hang of it. And it seems totally workable or usable, however you want to call it. As it describes in its uh, FAQs page, shift screen app needs to be on the left side of the iPad screen when using it in split view. And once I'm in split view, meaning I have the shift screen app and another app open, I tend to overshoot my mouse out of the windows open in shift screen. What I did then that made it easier for me is to really look and focus on the monitor when moving the mouse. This keeps my mouse icon then within the shift screen app or the browser window, because if I look or glance to the iPad, I tend to move my mouse outside the shift screen and I lose the mouse icon on the monitor. I hope you understand what I mean. You see here that both the trackpad and the mouse work well on shift screen. Well, it has some stutters here and there, but it was okay. Next, when playing YouTube, again, it's not using the app, it is playing on the website. Hovering the mouse on it will make the screen black or blank. And according to the FAQs page, you need to use this scroll pad mode to make it play. What I noticed though, is if I have two websites open in shift screen and one is YouTube, I don't need to press on the scroll pad mode. The video will keep playing as long as I don't put the mouse on the YouTube page. And lastly, if I want to be on full on multitasking mode, shift screen allows me to do it as it can open a total of four apps or I should better say websites or windows. 
So in total, four apps or windows or websites all at the same time. Plus, there's this option that you can open another desktop. So in total, there are two desktops and each can open four screens. Plus, I can still use the iPad screen for another app. I really see me using this when I'm on work mode, like doing research for my next YouTube video. I will explore the Shift screen app more and see how I feel about it. If you have questions or anything you want me to test, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to include it in a future video. So that's it. Thanks for watching.